Where would the alternative assets come in in your investment strategies? What digital assets are there on your radar right now? So that depends on the on the type of investor. Uh, and so gold, of course, is classified as an alternative asset. And so I, I described how I'm using that. Uh, you know, some uh, you know large pension funds can also use hedge funds uh, or other ways that to, to have these uncorrelated investments that are classified as alternatives. Uh, but in addition, I, I you know I've been bullish on digital assets, particularly Bitcoin, since April uh, of 2020. Uh, and so I do think that there's a, a useful uh, use case for digital assets. Now. It's challenging because you know they, in many ways, you know they're a liquidity play. And so, if you were to get a a liquidity problem, like you saw in March 2020, they'd probably do pretty poorly. Uh, but in this current cycle of growth, I I, I like uh, allocating a part of a portfolio towards uh, Bitcoin. Uh, and there's also a case we made, uh, you know, towards Ethereum as well. Uh, it's 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 more of an equity like investment than whereas Bitcoin is more of like a digital gold type investment. So I consider them uh, very different. Uh, but overall, I, I do think that they also solve a, serve a useful role in a portfolio, especially because you know they're somewhat even though they have liquidity correlations, uh, you know on the longer term they're somewhat uncorrelated. And so, you know, Bitcoin follows its four year halving cycle. Uh, and so they overall just represent a whole nother axis of analysis. So, you know, it, as I look at different buckets where I can put capital, I can say, okay, what are, what is U.S. economic data doing? What are equity valuations like? I can look at Europe. I can look at emerging markets and say, what are their economies doing? What are their equity valuations like? I can look at bond equivalents. I can look at gold. I can look at commodities. And then also digital assets represent another bucket that I can say, okay, what, I can look at the on-chain analysis uh, and see, okay, you know, what, what, what's going on here? I can look at what's happening in the ecosystem. Uh, and so there are a lot of opportunities there. Another one I, I found is that stable coin lending is a way to, to generate some yield. Uh, and it's kind of, you know, I, I describe it as equity-like returns, but also equity-like risk, uh, because you're, you're basically, your stable coins, for anyone who's not familiar, is that, you know, you, you have like a, 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 a token that is, is tied to a, a currency, often the dollar, but it could be the euro, it could be any currency. Uh, and so this, this represents, a, you know, basically a, a, a cryptocurrency wrapper around a normal piece of currency, and then you can lend that uh, in the markets for, 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 you know, kind of, you know, basically in a similar way that you would if you were lending uh, to, to equity margin, uh, you know, accounts or something like that, except it's based in the cryptocurrency world. And you can get rates of 8 to 11%, uh, in some cases more, but I, I prefer to stick on the conservative end, kind of the higher quality stable coins and the higher quality markets. And you can get 8 to 11%. Uh, and but of course the downside is that you know it's not the same as a bank deposit. You're not uh, you know you're not fully insured of losses and things like that. Uh, however, if you if you look at the lender very carefully and you, and you only do it for a part of your portfolio, you can have uncorrelated returns where you know there's certain tail risks that can make you lose your investment. Uh, but it's it's somewhat different correlation than compared to say investing in the equity market. Mm -hmm.